Having defined in detail the two types of stereoisomeric relationships, we now want to be able to identify the relationship between two molecules given their structures. This is important for a number of reasons, but just to highlight one on this introductory slide, there are many reactions in organic chemistry that have stereochemical aspects in the sense that they establish or destroy stereocenters. For example, a given reaction type might create enantiomers through no difference in electron flow aside from how the reactants approach each other spatially. To appreciate the similarities and differences between the reaction paths leading to one enantiomer or the other, we need to first be able to identify the isomeric relationship between these two potential products. I like to think of determining an isomeric relationship between two given molecules as riding the waves of the levels of organic structure, if you will. We start at the broadest level, connectivity, and drill down to the more subtle levels to determine the exact isomeric relationship between two given molecules. And the key is to ask the right questions as we consider each level of organic structure. Let's start, first of all, with the stipulation that the two molecules of interest, let's call them A and B for the purposes of this general discussion, have the same molecular formula. The first question to ask is, do A and B have the same connectivity? If they don't, well then they're of course constitutional isomers. They differ in connectivity or constitution. If they do have the same connectivity, that means they have the same constitution. So we have to move to a more detailed level of organic structure to determine the exact isomeric relationship. The next question that's worth asking is, are they superimposable? If you can overlay the two structures perfectly, then you're looking at two different views of the same molecule. They're homomers. If you can't, this implies that the molecules are stereoisomers. And as we've seen in the past two videos, the difference between the two types of stereoisomerism is really, are the molecules mirror images or not? If A and B are mirror images, this implies that they're enantiomers. We already identified in the previous question that the molecules are not superimposable. Because they're not superimposable, but they are mirror images, they must be enantiomers. And finally, if the molecules are not mirror images, but they're not superimposable, implying that they're stereoisomers, then they must be diastereomers. Let's apply this line of questioning to determine the isomeric relationship between the two molecules given here, two isomers of the amino acid proline. It's easy to verify that these two molecules have the same molecular formula, but since that was given here, I'll let you do that on your own. Do the molecules have the same connectivity? Well, they do. They both consist of five-membered rings with one nitrogen, and at a carbon adjacent to that nitrogen, we have a carboxylic acid functional group and an implied hydrogen that in the left-hand structure is here and in the right-hand structure is here. This means they're not constitutional isomers. They have the same constitution or connectivity. Are they superimposable? There are actually a couple of different ways to determine whether these molecules are superimposable or not. One is to just try our damnedest to overlay them. And the way these are drawn makes this fairly easy. We can notice, for example, that if we were to simply slide the left-hand molecule over on top of the right-hand molecule, we would end up with the five-membered rings matching exactly with the nitrogen in the bottom right corner and the other four carbons matching up perfectly. The problem here is that the hydrogens don't correspond since the hydrogen is going up in this molecule on the right and down in this molecule on the left, and then naturally the carboxylic acid groups wouldn't correspond since the carboxylic acid on the left is coming out towards us but the carboxylic acid group on the right is going back away from us. These two molecules are not superimposable because they differ in configuration at this stereocenter. And so another way to show that these molecules are not superimposable is to demonstrate that they have different configurations at their only stereocenter right here. The molecule on the left has the S configuration at this stereocenter, whereas the molecule on the right has the R configuration. And this difference the fact that there is only one stereocenter in this molecule is enough to conclude that they're non-superimposable. Are they mirror images? Well, once again, there are a couple of different ways to verify this. One method involves turning over the molecules so that they're looking at each other as they would look in a mirror and making sure that they are, in fact, mirror images of each other when we place corresponding groups pointing towards each other. When we turn over the molecule on the right here, the structure we end up with looks something like this, with the carboxylic acid group now on a wedge pointed out towards us since we've flipped over the molecule. Notice that this image in blue is the mirror image of this molecule in black on the left. So the molecules are mirror images. We could also come to that conclusion just by examining these RS labels that we generated previously. 
The molecules have one stereocenter each, and they differ in configuration at this stereocenter, indicating that they must be mirror images of each other. Because we previously concluded that the molecules are not superimposable, they must be enantiomers. The molecule on the left is S-proline, and the molecule on the right is R-proline. Let's apply this method to the somewhat more complicated case of canic acid. The two molecules shown here do have the same molecular formula. You can verify that on your own. And they also have the same connectivity. The easiest way to see this is to kind of blank out the wedges and dashes, just drawing straight lines anywhere where we see a wedge and a dash to indicate connectivity. Doing this and thinking just a little bit about implied hydrogens verifies for us that these molecules do have the same connectivity. Are the molecules superimposable? Well, they're already drawn in an orientation where groups are corresponding nicely with this carboxylic acid corresponding to this one, this CH2 corresponding to this CH2, and this alkene group corresponding to this alkene group. So to decide whether the molecules are superimposable or not, it seems like we should just be able to slide one right on top of the other. In doing this, we find that this stereocenter in the top right matches up with the carboxylic acid going back and an implied hydrogen coming out towards us and the stereocenter in the bottom left also matches up with the alkene group coming out towards us and the implied hydrogen going back away from us. However, notice that this stereocenter differs between the two molecules. In the top case, the CH2 is coming out towards us and the H is going back. In the bottom case, the CH2 is going back away from us and the implied hydrogen here is coming out towards us. We can also verify all of this with RS labels. This configuration here is S in both molecules, and this configuration is S in both molecules as well. This configuration is S in the top molecule, and R in the bottom molecule. So the molecules are not superimposable, so they're not homomer. Are they mere images? This is equivalent to asking the question, as we've seen in the previous two videos, do they differ in all of their configurations or not at this point, since we've already verified that they're not superimposable. And as the highlighting shows, they do not differ in all of their configurations, and so they are not enantiomers. To summarize, they have the same connectivity, they are not superimposable, and they are not mirror images, allowing us to conclude that they are diastereomers. As a final point of interest in this example, I should mention that the only molecule that's rightly called canic acid is actually the first. Diastereomers, especially in a biochemical context, are typically given completely different names, and this molecule at the bottom actually just made up by changing the configuration of this central stereocenter. You'll notice this, for example, in a carbohydrate context, where the general structure of all six carbon carbohydrates is something like this, where I'm obscuring the stereochemical information. The different diastereomers associated with this structure involved with changing the configurations of all of these many stereocenters are all given completely different names. 